Greetings, warriors. This word is a um, monthly prophetic word for month of June 2019. I'm recording live on Facebook on Lightbeam East Coast group. Um, if you like the YouTube videos that we upload, I encourage you to subscribe to them. Um, and I, we have monthly uh, words that I post and also occasional words that I do post on, on Facebook. So um, yeah, God bless you. I want to start us off with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you so much for what you are going to do this year. Thank you for month of June. Thank you for the expectation that you are giving us. I pray for an amazing breakthrough, even as I preach this word, that this prophetic message would be a word of encouragement for many. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, warriors. So this morning I was praying for a prophetic word for month of June 2019. And the Lord said this. Declare and decree. Declare and decree. So I believe month of June, we're going to see amazing victories, but um, it's not a victory that will be handed down to us like um, without us even knowing that we will win something. But I felt like God said, declare and decree the word of the Lord. Um, and I, I kind of want to look through uh, Joshua 1.8. It says, keep this book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And I believe God is saying to us that we must remember to keep the word of the Lord in our lips. And declaration and speaking out what God has already told us is very important. That will be a key to your breakthrough. I believe God is going to um, allow us to speak words in declaration. I feel like in the past season, there's been a lot of attack against uh, spiritual warriors, battling with uh, Jezebel's spirit, battling with a lot of negativity. But warriors... Uh, victory is coming. Triumph is coming. And uh, I'm really excited about end of this month when we're going to kick off uh, two weeks of worship revolution and the whole uh, title is Blessed Triumph. And God keeps telling me to just declare triumph because the Lord of Jesus had won the victory on the cross. Amen. So uh, believe with me that, that that's going to happen. And I believe uh, while it will happen, I believe what God is saying is asking us to really declare with our own mouth because words have power. Our declaration have power of releasing faith. Um, Romans 4.16, it says, it's Romans 4.16 through uh, 24, it talks about Abraham and how uh, the Lord had given him a promise of being a father of many nations, but it was the promise itself was almost dead because Abram had no way of, of producing an offspring. And I, I just want to read this verse because it's so interesting. Uh, Therefore, the promise comes by faith. So how does the promise of God, how does God's uh, promise for you, how does it come? It comes by faith so that it may be by grace and, and may be guaranteed to all God, Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who, ha who have faith, who have the faith of Abraham. So, uh, he is the father of us all. It's talking about us Christians. Um, as it is written, I made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believes that God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Calls into being things that were not. So it's talking about how God, he gives life to the dead, the promises that felt like it was dead because Abraham had no way of giving birth to Isaac. It was almost like God gave you a promise, but there's no zero possibility of it happening in real life, right? But God calls it forth to, to happen in faith. And it's talking about he calls things that were not to come to pass. And it says in 18, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Uh, just as it is written, it has been said to, uh, to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was not was as good as dead. So uh, he didn't have much faith. He was 100 years old. It was like his body was as good as dead. And Sarah's womb was almost dead too. So there was no way that they could have this word come to pass. There are some of you listening to this um, who are in kind of a similar situation where God had given you a promise, but it's as good as dead. It's like uh, there's no way uh, in your human mind of this promise uh, coming to pass. But God is encouraging you, warriors, and encouraging you to really declare because in your declaration, in your calling forth in faith, things that were dead will come alive. Things that were uh, not about to happen will happen. So that is what the Lord is saying to us today regarding the promise of God. But 
was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Amen. How many of you believe that? God has the power to do what he has promised. Of course, when he promises, he's not a liar. He will never disappoint us. His promises is or will always come to pass. Amen. This is why it was credited to him as righteous. So again, the Bible says Abraham was credited as righteous because he kept on believing in these promises that didn't seem real. Uh, but they did come to pass because of the faith that he had. And he was called righteous because of his faith and believing in God. So warriors, I believe uh, God is just encouraging us this month to declare. And then another word was to decree. And I believe what he's saying is decree, it, it, the difference between decree and declaration is de declaration is just speaking uh, words of promise, speaking the Bible, speaking out what will happen, uh, speaking out in faith the things that God has put in your heart. But decree has a, a bit of a different feel to it. Decree means an official order that has the force of law. So in the book of Esther, it talks about how uh, Haman had, had uh, convinced the king to sign a decree, an official document that must be enforced in real life, right? Enforced by law. Here's, here's what I see. Here's what I see. This is what I saw. The evil decree that the devil has released, somehow legally, he thinks, will be canceled and the decree of heaven will be executed in the month of June. So listen to this evil decree that the devil somehow signed off and said this will happen it's an evil decree that was against you it's kind of like Haman's uh decree of the king to kill off the israelites it's an evil decree to kill off the israelites these decrees will be canceled and the decree of heaven will be executed i believe god is asking us warriors believe in jesus believers in jesus christ to decree the declaration of the Lord to decree something that is in the heavenly realm to come to pass in order for these things to uh, be executed on earth. Um, these things will happen in the legal realm, I believe in politics, where certain uh, legal things happened, where um, you know laws were passed to go against God's people, laws were passed to um, reverse the holiness of, of what the Lord wants you to do, reverse things, uh, but but these things were already decreed and the devil is trying to convince us that we can't reverse it. But God is saying, uh, my, my people decree the things that are already spoken in heaven so that it will be executed on earth. There is such a battle right now in the second heavens to block heaven's decree from coming to pass. How many of you feel that way? I just feel, you know, it's in such a tough few months because again, I'm going to say it because I think this is uh, the experience of many warriors that we had all these amazing promises of the Lord from the beginning of the year. 2019 kind of started off with expectation and hope that this is a year of transition. This is a year where we will expect revival to happen and harvest to happen and many good things were promised. But then many of you felt like there was a block. Suddenly there were, there were these oppositions that you found out about. There were these decrees that were against you. There were these um, blockages that were against you. And it's been very difficult for about two or three months now. And if that's you, yeah, you're on the same boat. <laughs> I feel like, you know, th th there's such a war, like God had decreed something up in, up in the heavenly realm, but as it is supposed to be, uh, you know, executed here on earth, so many opposition on many, many levels of, of the heavenly realm. There's so many uh, distractions trying to steal, you know, the devil trying to uh, not allow it to happen. But, you know, I believe in the month of June will be a month of breakthrough as we decree the things that we see in the heavenly realm. Just speak it out. Uh, just uh, let's say I'm an Esther and uh, there was a decree against Israelites to be killed. And as an Esther, God is saying, decree that that will not happen. The reverse, the decree, that the, the evil decree that the, the devil has uh, proclaimed already. So just decree it with your heart. I cancel these evil decrees in the name of Jesus and I reverse it. And what I see in the heavenly realm is that Israelites will live. Israelites will live. Not, not a single person will be harmed. That's the kind of heavenly decree because that's the heart of God. That's what God wants to release as his verdict. And we must agree with the decree that's already declared in heaven and make it to come to pass. This is where we need to exercise faith. So the word for June is not like, this is not a word where I say, hey, this is going to happen and you can just enjoy it. But I feel like there's an intention to this encouragement for you that you need to intentionally declare. You need to intentionally decree. You need to intentionally move towards faith. You need to be intentional 
about what comes out of your mouth. Do not agree with the devil's plan. Do not agree with the enemy's whispers against what God wants to do. See, ask God to show you what kind of decrees were declared in heaven and then make agreements with it. You just repent of any agreements you made on the earthly realm with the enemy. Just cancel it and then say, God, I agree with what was spoken in heaven and I, I, I decree it from the seat of the throne. I decree it as your sons and daughters. We decree it in the name of Jesus that that, that decree from heaven will be executed upon this earth. And I want to encourage you to do this this month. Um, this this is what I believe God is saying to us. And, uh, I, you know, we've been giving words about repayment that's coming. And if, if you haven't uh, received that kind of repayment, I believe what, what the Lord is saying is that you just need to decree, agree with heaven's, heaven's rules and heavenly principles in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Number three. So another uh, phrase that I heard was good news will come. God said good news will come. So, but it was really interesting because, you know, we know that the gospel is the good news, right? The gospel is the good news. Good news will come. But in 1 Corinthians 1.18, it says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are, who are perishing, but to us who are being saved is the power of God. So the message of the gospel is amazingly good news for us who believe, but the gospel is a bad news for those who are sinning, bad news for the, those who reject it, right? So I believe good news will come, but what God is saying is people will respond to this good news in a different way. The good news that we hear will not be the good news for the evildoers. The good news that we hear will not be a good news for those who don't believe. But God is saying to us today that pray that you will recognize this good news as a good news because God's good news is terrible news for the, for the sinners, right? So uh, I, I pray that you will recognize those things that you hear. Um, people may re reach out to you. You may hear something, good reports or even bad reports. Now, listen to this. As I was writing this word, God said, I even saw like some of you will re receive a bad report. Some of you may receive what sounds negative, but that actually will be good news for you. Um, but so you have to pray that you will recognize these things. Even if it sounds negative, it's actually good news from the Lord for you, a good news of salvation. Let's say somebody in your uh, close circle may, may be sick. You might receive a report that this person is sick and they might feel like, gosh, that was a bad news. But the Lord, you, you have to pray that you will have ears to hear that that, that sickness will be completely removed and then God will use it for his glory. That's how you should hear it. And it would turn into a good news. Does that make sense? Yeah, so God bless you uh, because good news will come. And uh, pray that good, good reports will come from all sides. And as I was also writing this, I felt like God said, get ready for the harvest and revival. And that is really what I'm doing here in Japan. I'm really praying for harvest and revival that will come upon Asia and upon Japan. You know, I believe uh, there's something going on, uh, especially some new revelations about partnership between partnership between America and Japan. Uh, I believe there's it's a, it's literally a new aura here in Japan, and that uh, from so many years, Japan has been one of those countries where it's been toughest for missionaries. Ninety nine point six percent non Christian. You know, you see small temples and idol worship all over, all over, all over. Um, here in Japanese are very religious, so they worship everything and anything. Uh, but that is why, exactly why we need to have worshipers come to Japan and break those strongholds. We, we are calling forth people who know how to worship, who, who worship Jesus, to gather together at the end of June for Koreans, beginning of July for English speakers and Japanese, to gather here for two weeks of worship revolution, one week of worship revolution for English speakers, first week of July, because I believe uh, we are to get ready for the harvest and revival. And you know, the other day I had a prayer meeting with some people here and my husband and I were praying about a certain situation that we were facing, a pretty big opposition actually. It's, we really need a lot of prayer for this. But as we were praying for our issue, at the end of it, my husband kind of said, you know, Jesus, we just asked for revival because just like when Solomon was faced with a lot of issues because he had to be a ruler and he had to uh, reign like David and he, he really didn't know how to do it and then God asked him what do you want and he said he needed wisdom and that answer really pleased the Lord it pleased God and God released not only wisdom but everything that comes along with it 
And I feel like that's kind of the heart. When we were praying, God said, he, of course he knows we have issues. Of course he knows all of our prayer requests. Of course God knows what we're facing. Of course God knows everything about us. But instead of praying for those earthly things, my husband said, no, by faith, we're going to pray for revival. We're going to pursue revival. We're going to pray for kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven here in Japan because this is where we're at now. So we pray for revival and, and we ask that that, that, will, that will be done. And then God, you take, a, you take care of all the rest of the stuff in Jesus name. And if you pray this way, you will hear amazing good reports coming from all sides. I declare this in Jesus name. So be open to amazing good reports from all around the world about what God is doing in Jesus name. Uh, another phrase, now I, I know this all sounds kind of choppy. If it does, I'm so sorry, but I do hope that this is encouraging because God's just speaking to me and I'm, I'm just delivering it. The Lord did say, reverse, reversing of the curse will happen. He will reverse the curse. This is what he said. And I think this also is along the lines with how I told you that we are to actively declare, actively agree with heaven's decree. It means we need to speak out the truth. We need to speak out God's heart. And I believe God's going to reverse the curse. This is a month of reversing of word curses. There's been word curses that were against you, gossip that was against you, people who said stuff behind your back, uh, generational curses that were passed down to you, stuff that's spoken in your household, it was the things that your friends say to you that operate like a curse. In, in the Bible, it says, um, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love 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 it will eat its fruit. So tongue has the power of life and death, how you say it. Um, God is saying that he's going to bring divine reversal, but specifically in the month of June, I'm praying for complete reversal of these word curses, that God will expose where these demonic curses came in, creeped in, because sometimes these word curses have kind of a force. We don't want to give too much power to it, force to even um, harm us physically. And as I was praying for you this morning, the Lord said some people listening to these words will receive healing from sickness too. Some of you have physical uh, con conditions, physical health issues that are not physical, but it's a result of a word curse. And I saw uh, that God wanted to heal you. So right now I declare healing in the name of Jesus. Some of you are listening. God is completely healing you from the things that the doctor have said can they cannot heal. Any autoimmune related disease, we just rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Any cancerous cells that are trying to grow, we just cancel you in the name of Jesus. I reverse that curse of cancer in the name of Jesus. Any kind of um, heart condition, any kind of mental illness, we just reverse it and send it back to the sender because mental illness do not belong in the people of God. Depression do not belong in the people of God. Jezebel, you have been trying to put depression in Elijah's and I say no more in the name of Jesus right now. There are many Elijah's that God want to raise up. There are many prophets and prophetesses the Lord wants to anoint you. But there's been such an attack from the Jezebel spirit and I just send this curse back to Jezebel, back to your camp. May confusion just just be, you know, be in your enemy's camp. It does not belong in my camp. It does not belong in my mind. It doesn't belong in your mind. Just claim it. Claim total healing and clarity in your mind in the name of Jesus because you are called to prophesy. You are called to speak the truth. You are not to be under any kind of curse. No one has any authority over you. So I just bless you. And I reverse this curse. I'm imagining myself being surrounded by the wall of the, uh, the, the blood of Jesus because blood of Jesus has so much power. Come on, imagine with me right now that there's a, blood, there's a wall around you that's created uh, made up of the blood of Jesus so powerful and any any curses that were sent your way by the enemy's camp it's being reflected back to them in the name of Jesus I push you back I push you back well see you can't be in my camp you can't be in my boundary you cannot be in my household you cannot harass my children you cannot harass my ministry you cannot harass my music you cannot harass my health you cannot get into my head no 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 be out in the name of Jesus I rebuke you and I reverse you and I send it back to the sender. I send it back to the sender. Devil, you take this curse with you. It doesn't belong to God's people. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. So send it back, like just how I, I prayed. Send it back to the devil. You are the cursed one, not us. We are blessed. We are people of blessing. When you obey Jesus, so many blessings will flow into your life and claim this in Jesus' name. So I bless you. I believe there has been a divine reversal starting in March. I, I wrote this, I spoke this word in uh, uh, YouTube, uh, March 1st, the Lord said divine reversal. And since then, there has been 
there has been divine reversal. God's placed people in divine places and there's been divine reversal. But I believe this divine reversal has been continuing in the past few months. So March, April, May, and now we're entering into June. June. I believe this month also, this will continue throughout this month and we will see amazing results of what this, what this divine reversal actually looks like. Um, God told us on April 1st to come up with a 100-day strategy and I told my husband, I said, uh, hey, we, I think starting on April 1st, we need to commit something to the Lord for 100 days. There's big shifts that are coming. Uh, so I counted the days and it looks like the 100th day from April 1st is somewhere in the second week of July. So I have great expectation that the Lord is working on something. There's divine healing, reversals, uh, curses being broken, God's hindrance is being removed for the sake of revival i believe there's something that's happening and if you agree with this word just say yes and amen because the lord is uh, releasing his heavenly strategy to bless you to set you free to prepare for the next big wave of revival that he has been promising to so many people all around the world so god bless you this is the word for for june and i'm just gonna spend some time praying right now for you and share with you what i see in this moment yeah, what I see as I, as I speak, I saw um, little eagles gathered around in a small nest. I believe there's a lot of eagles that the Lord has been training, but you have not learned to fly yet. It's like eagles were birthed. I believe in the past season, many eagles were birthed and they were like these baby eagles. But I see, I see these eagles in training. They're being dropped from high places in order for them to learn how to fly. And some of you, I believe God's going to drop you. <laughs> I mean, in a good way, like an eagle, he's going to launch you. I see launching of eagles. I see um, people, birds flying. I see callings taking off. I see um, people just, just like being released to be eagles. So God bless you. Your season of being a baby is over. You Now you need, it's time for you to fly. Now it's time for you to be activated. So bless you in Jesus' name, all of you eagles who are called to be uh prophetic who are called to go to high places in jesus name so that's that's a prophetic word for you right now another word i want to i want to speak over you is a transfer of wealth that has uh not come through yet i believe this year will be a year of uh continuing uh wealth transfer but this is what i see i see abundance coming back to your heart i see god actually increasing your giftings that's how wealth will come see it, when we talk about transfer of wealth we kind of think that this is how people think people think like oh okay well that means somebody rich is going to drop me drop off a bunch of uh, you know cash on my lap is if that's what you're thinking maybe but i don't think that's going to be the case for everybody i think when the lord is saying transfer of wealth what i see is god just bringing an increase in the gifting that he's already put in you so he's saying to you that you already have the capacity to create wealth you already have the capacity to create prosperity and God, when God anoints it, it will just take off. So I bless you to be wealthy. I bless you to be the center of this transfer, receiving this transfer of wealth uh, because he will anoint the giftings that you have. If it's artistic, if it's business related, if it's writing, if it's, uh, you know, taking care of kids, I don't know what your gifting is, but bless that in Jesus name. That's what the Lord will do. And um, lastly, I want to invite you to Japan. Uh, to come to missions. Now, this is along the lines with uh, Missions 120 that we did last year and also with the student volunteer movement that I'm very passionate about uh, in the East Coast of America, uh, centered around D.L. Moody and some Ivy League students. In the 1800s, they went all around the world to um, preach the good news of the gospel in their 20s. And it's just quite an amazing story. Even here in Osaka, about I think about an hour north, there is a um, a village called Christian Village. Can you imagine? It's called Christian Village, but people who live there are not Christian. <laughs> and it's a small village where they found um, relics of saints from the old uh, Christianity of Japan. I think in 1600s, um, I should really do my homework, but old days, like how uh, these Christians were uh, persecuted. And, you know, there are sites in Japan where masses of Christians, mostly um, Jesuits, I guess, um, they were killed. Uh, because they believe in Jesus. There was such a heavy martyrdom here in the soil of Japan. And uh, there's a small place called Christian Village where nowadays they're not Christian, but because they found these uh, relics of Christians and these portraits of old uh, Christian missionaries who came to Japan in the 1600s, they name it Christian Village. 
And, uh, you know, but can you believe they don't know Jesus? They don't know Jesus. We have to go and tell them. We have to go and tell them. Um, this, this land is crying out for you to come. This land is crying out for somebody to come worship. This land is waiting for the good news. This land is, uh, it will burst in revival. Come. So pray about coming because I believe this is the calling and the destiny over, especially people on the East Coast of America where these volunteer movements happened, where young people were recruited to be missionaries and they were sent out all around the world. And, you know, this year we, you know, there was a big event called Ascend in Florida. And, you know, I didn't know about it. I can't believe it. I really should have gone. But I was so excited to see how God is shifting these movements these days from it being inward into being outward. It, it, there's a lot of ministries that are recognizing that there is a, a movement that's coming where missions and evangelism must be activated because still gospel needs to be preached. People are dying. And so I want to invite you to pray about joining and uh, coming or supporting this uh, wonderful uh, conference that we're doing, uh, Worship Revolution. We actually rented a small nightclub here in Osaka to do a concert. Amazing. <laughs> so we're going to get back into worship and doing some singing, uh, worship, new release some new sounds of worship. So it's really exciting. So please check that out. And uh, if you want to subscribe to this video, yes, go ahead and do that. Um, God bless you. If you want to hear more of my prophetic words online, uh, please go to Light Beam. You can, you know, on Facebook, you can type in Light Beam, L I G H T B E A M, and then your region, or you can just look at a bunch of regions that are up there and you can ask to be added. Um, yeah, so God bless you. May, may the Lord be with you excited about the month of June being a month of declaration and decree. God's going to bring amazing healing, transformation, and preparation for revival in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you.